zero in 2009. Uh, and that is the Bitcoin halving cycle because Bitcoin was launched exactly at that point as well. So the liquidity cycle is the predominant drive. Hello everyone, today our guest is former hedge fund manager, crypto investor and billionaire, Raul Pal, who in this video talks about the current market analysis of Bitcoin, the stock market, and discussed the macro outlook. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you. Bitcoin BTC is on target to finish the week with a sharp fall of around 9%. This suggests that some traders may be booking profits in fear of a resumption of the downtrend. Analysts expect Bitcoin to reach the $26,600, $25,000 zone, where buying interest may pick up. When an asset emerges from a bear market, it tries to form higher lows on the way up. These levels act as strong supports during subsequent corrections. The current pullback could end up forming a higher floor for Bitcoin, which may act as a launch pad for the next rally. If long-term investors believe that a bottom has been made, then panicking and selling on every corrective phase is not a good strategy. Rather, every dip could be an opportunity to build a portfolio. The correction in Bitcoin has pulled several altcoins lower. Only a handful of major cryptocurrencies are holding out and looking strong on the charts. I've mentioned many times, the whole crypto market is driven by two things, network adoption, which is the long-term trend. And then in the middle is the liquidity cycle. The liquidity cycle hit a bottom in June and we started seeing the forward-looking indicators come up. And we've seen already the central bank balance sheet was led by China, Japan, and then the US. That liquidity cycle is in full flow now. So that should continue all the way through till 2025. And that's why we started Crypto Spring. It happens every time we get to this point. We, so, so forward looking, the liquidity cycle should continue. And the banking situation is one of the examples of how the liquidity cycle comes in. Uh, the Chinese continue with M2 growth, uh, the use of the central bank balance sheet. The Japanese have obviously been using yield curve control. So for me, you know, we're, we're in the right cycle now. And this should continue to play out. Now, within those, you get plenty of volatility. Usually, you get 35% pullbacks are pretty common. Is this a 35% pullback we're in the middle of or a shorter one? Don't know. Don't really care. Um, you know, I did all of my allocation. I, you know, I haven't sold anything ever. I just bought more in June, October, and January and just used that opportunity into the big sell-offs and that's it. The fact that the US is threatening that they continue to tighten and interest rates continue to be increased, in that that's all offset by international liquidity on the one side and then on the other side, um, uh, well, Japan, China, and also you think, you think that the US isn't actually tightening because of the banking collapse and everything else. Yeah, so the tightening, it's, it's not about interest rates, it's about liquidity. So the change in interest rates is a part of the liquidity cycle, but the central bank balance sheet is the predominant driver plus M2. Um, there is about a 90% correlation between the price of crypto assets and the global and the, a global liquidity index that we use, which is a function of the G5 central bank balance sheets plus um, plus the Fed balance sheet. Look at the, uh, uh, the, sorry, the G5 central bank balance sheets plus their M2. Um, so look at the central bank balance sheet there with the Fed. And you saw that little spike, which was the injection of liquidity into the banking system. And all assets rose with that. Um, and so, yeah, the, the interest rate rises are red herring at this point. The halving cycle and the four-year halving cycle. And at the same time, is it coincidental that the halving cycle corresponds to this new liquidity cycle? Because you're kind of getting both of them at the same time. Raul, I see that, you, that you're nodding. It's the same thing. It so happened that Bitcoin was launched exactly at the time that global interest rates went to zero. Everybody reset their entire interest rate um, and their entire debt burden at the same time. Everybody around the world. So every central bank, every country, every corporation, everybody reset rates at zero. It's created and most most of those most of that debt is between three and five year debt. Um, and what you've got is this three and a half year cycle to four year cycle. And it's a global phenomena, and it was driven by interest rates being zero in 2009. Uh, and that is 
the Bitcoin halving cycle because Bitcoin was launched exactly at that point as well. So the liquidity cycle is the predominant driver. Now, doesn't mean it's wrong to follow the Bitcoin halving cycle because it happens to be the macro cycle as well. And that's all well and good. And if people understand it in those terms, that's fine. But it is actually the liquidity cycle that is global and it is a complete ch structural change to the world that happened after 2008. That uh, if you look at the ISM cycle, so the Institute of Supply Managers survey, it is exactly three and a half year cycles. And we've never had this before. And it's just driven by the debt refi cycle globally. There is a risk curve. And people will, will move on the risk curve depending where you are. So when you're in crypto spring and there's uncertainty, you go to the safest, most secure, most known asset and the most liquid, which is Bitcoin. Then you tend to then spill out and you see then Ethereum start to catch up. But as people become more confident in the cycle itself, you see it spread further out of the curve. And you're starting to see that already. I mean, Solana had a huge run this year. There's a few things that have had a huge run. It's not consistent yet. So it's very common that the Bitcoin dominance falls. It's the same in the credit market. People buy treasuries first, then they buy corporate credit, then they buy junk bonds, then they all blow up and we start all over again. I mean, it's, it's a standard way that we operate. So it's it's very common. So crypto is no different than financial markets. And I, I did a lot of work on, on Metcalfe's law, network effects and how to model it. And I found that really most of it is explained by two factors only. One is number of active addresses. And the other is the value exchange on chain. So um, those two pretty much match price. So what Dan's saying is right and what Melton's saying is right is you need activity on chain. It's not just the active addresses. As long as they're doing stuff, the value of the network increases over time. Um, but there needs to be activity. So, you know, that, that so is real. Raul, and, and I, I think I think, um, I think Melton's with, I think she just switched off her camera for a second. But there are people that are saying that this Bitcoin dominance thing is going to continue to climb and dominance is going to continue to go higher. I think I share, I, I have a view that in five years, the Bitcoin dominance is going to be 10%. I don't know, 20 percent it's going to be almost if you want to call it like you know dec declining is that how you see the world or do you see the world differently do you see the, any world where bitcoin dominance can remain at 46 47 percent for a period of three four five years it depends what demand there is for the bitcoin blockchain it's as simple as that you know right now if you look at the the number of different applications being built on Ethereum, you generally think that the network will likely grow faster over time than Bitcoin. But that can change. We've got ordinals. We've got other use cases for Bitcoin. We could see um, global central banks or uh, sovereign wealth actors involved in Bitcoin. So it, it depends. I, I think likely Bitcoin dominance falls over time um, because of the, the lower number of use cases. But, you know, it, it's not it's not something I worry about all day or think about yeah. what you've done with ETH is you've created a money market curve of what is you know a reasonably complete digital economy and the money market curve now allows people to stake at will reduce some risk in the system there's no real reason why people at the early stage of a cycle are going to take their ETH out they will do at some point and put it into other stuff as they go out the risk curve or or go down the risk curve and go back to Bitcoin, but I think it's a very sensible thing. And actually, it's setting up for something I think a little more complex that I've got my eye on is we've got an issue that staking is going to rise in ETH because it, it's got a good yield. It's reasonably understandable. So it gives us some sort of risk-free rate within the space. The issue is you've also got the ETH burning and you end up with a very limited supply of ETH in a bull market. Now, I understand that, um, that as the... Uh, cost of compute goes up, what you end up with is um, less burning over time. But there is an issue that you could end up with a very squeezy market. And it could be a problem for ETH, actually. You say the ETH staking re reward is high, but it's, I mean, right now you can get 4%, as Dan was saying, you can get 4% for just putting your money into a government T-bill. Yeah, but you're choosing, it's, it's, a cur it's a currency, right? So you are investing in a currency. You've made the choice, like you live in South Africa, you will try and hold non-South African currency. You get yes. different yields, right? So if you've chosen to live in Web3 world, okay, here you've got an asset that has 
a high quality asset that has a decent enough yield. It compares to traditional yields. We're not asking it for to have more because it's got a much different risk reward profile than, than the US dollar or US treasuries. Yes. But it's a way if you want to park capital in the space passively and still participate, you get a yield. Much like if you went to US dollars, you might put it into into the US bond market and try and get a yield from that. There's no no difference. I generally hold a basket out the risk curve and it's kind of very weighted towards ETH. I have a bit of Bitcoin, but then I will look for what I think has gets network effects. And I think Solana has some potential of provable network effects. As Dan said, it's still kind of at the VC stage, but I see a lot of activity on chain. I see a lot of developer activity. I see a lot of wallet addresses, etc. So, you know, I hold stuff, including Doge, um, because, you know, Doge is a really interesting one to me. And the reason I being, can't believe it. <laughs> well, there's a there's a thesis, Dan. Hands up, the, hands up the if thesis you hold is, it. Honestly, I can't believe it. I, you, that is all the way out the re- risk curve into the yeah, planet yeah. and the medic ether. I mean, hands up, uh, hands, hands up, if you hold Doge. I mean, hands up. If, is there anyone holding Doge? Yet? No, I've got Doge. Meltem, are you not holding Doge? There's not enough time in the day. I'm with Meltem. I've got so much going on. I, it's it's hard to. No, and the reason I've done it, and I've held it for ages, and it's a tiny position, is it has, if you think of the Metcalf's law model, it has a lot of active addresses. What it doesn't have is any use case. Now, all it requires is one use case, which is Elon. If Elon uses it for Twitter, (laughs) you have network effects very fast. So I'm like, I'll take that option. Why not? And, you know, because as as Melton points out, a, a meme is a use case as well. Yeah. You know, culture is a use case. The BTC slash USDT pair could then tumble to the breakout level of $25,250. This is an important level to keep an eye on because if this support crumbles, the pair may plunge to $20,000. Buyers will have to push and sustain the price above the 20-day EMA to signal a comeback. That could attract buying and push the price toward the $31,000-$32,500 resistance zone. If you enjoy this highlight videos, please kindly subscribe and help share this video for us to share more of this valuable content. Thank you.